Hey everybody, this is Perch. What's going on with Oni Press? Well, uh, the short answer is that there's been more layoffs and they're undergoing a massive management restructuring. And if you listen to this show, I don't know, a few weeks ago when I talked about this the first time, I, uh, I said that this there would absolutely, without a doubt, no questions about it, be more. Be more people being let go and there would be more of a, a cleansing of the management staff. So what's the news today? Well, uh, the news today is Oni Press lays off more people and is cleansing the management staff, describing it as a management restructuring. So the three big names, and, and really one you know more than others, Alex Sagara, uh, who's, of course, well-known to a number of people in comics, Amanda Meadows, uh, Jasmini uh, Amarini, Am- Amiri? Amiri? and Henry uh, Barjas have all been let go from Oni Press, and there's apparently more. This joins... James Lucas Jones and Charlie Chu, uh, who were let go a few weeks ago, um, and uh, the more more are coming. Um, they are the you know the word has gotten out that uh, that there's basically the company is going to downsize to only a skeleton staff that logistically can keep the uh, fully owned, meaning non creator owned books, uh, going at Oni. And uh, this is uh, all prepping. And if you listen to the last video, I, I speculated on this too. I, and, and it wasn't, in fairness, this isn't any kind of genius speculation. When companies make these moves like this suddenly and, and you know, and driven the way they are, um, it means either you've got a massive sexual, uh, you know, crime that has been committed somewhere in the management team, which has happened. Uh, but uh, the way this one went down, that that seemed very unlikely. And, and you know, if anybody who knows Charlie Chu, um, you know, it wasn't going to be that. Uh, but anyway, or the company is being prepped for sale. In this case, Polarity uh, Limited is the owner of Oni, and they have you know very clearly indicated that the company is being prepped uh, prepped for sale. So th- this is what's basically going on now. You know, we'll get into the kind of the, the tough part of all this in a second. You know, obviously people losing their jobs and the instability of the comics industry and the company and everything else, and no discounting that. Uh, but it's important to understand the basics. And the basics here are a company is getting sold. The, pretty much the end. That is, that is what's happening. That is, that is absolutely, absolutely what's going down. Uh, Oni Press is basically in a conserved capital mode as a restructure. They pulled out of uh, San Diego Comic Con, which normally they do. Uh, by the way, I saw some. I saw people do. In fact, uh, I think Thinking Critical did as well. There's there were people were talking about how DC pulled out of San Diego Comic Con. I was it was a little weird because DC has pulled out of San Diego Comic Con many times before. Like they, they, this isn't new. Um, so I was I was a little I, I was confused why the news uh, went down the way it did. Uh, but anyway, uh, the smaller publishers typically have a little bit more reason to be at the show. They, that's where they do a lot of portfolio recruiting. That's where they do strike some business deals. That's typically when you're a small company that's owned by private equity and you're looking to you know, get a deal done or get a movie picked up or get a property converted or whatever else, San Diego Comic-Con is where a lot of those deals have taken place. And if you're going down to San Diego, there's going to be a large number of creators and small companies that are basically going to be shopping properties to production houses and to buyers and to people who are going to put an option on things. And, and so that that's a lot of that's going to go on uh, next week at, at San Diego Comic-Con. So Oni Press, which has put a lot of its effort, you know, specifically into uh, that, that exact situation that uh, specifically has, you know, been shopping, basically, we've got properties that could be movies, give us money. So for them to pull out of uh, Comic Con is pretty dramatic. That's uh, that's going to be a bigger deal, and so that that anyway that is what's going on. Uh, these uh, several of these these people have um, that, that were let go have confirmed that they were let go. Uh, but what's uh, weird now? Uh, here comes advice time to creators. People are uh, are basically, you know saying, hey, you know, if you're a creator, make sure you have the rights for your book locked up, make sure that you have the, you know, make sure that you're, you're not, they're not going to be in limbo now. And I get that that's one concern people have, and they should, they should definitely focus on it. But in my mind, there's a much bigger concern. And that would be, hey, both creators and staffers at small companies, learn to recognize the signs in the event that your company is about to do the same thing. 
because I think uh, there's been a lot of rumblings lately, including for some bigger names, including Boom, that there may that that other companies are going to follow suit. That there's going to be a a pretty significant reduction in staff. That inflation and companies pulling back from optioning things, and you know everything from Netflix announcing that they were going to do, they're going to pull back on several of the projects they were going to have. The the easy money vehicle to translate comics to movies is become more difficult. It's it's drying up to some extent, and that means that a lot of uh, again a lot of of money people, a lot of private equity firms, a lot of investors were investing into comics specifically uh, with this idea in mind, with this uh, with this approach, with this thought of, hey, um, you know, put in some money, it's going to get optioned, you're going to get a return, you know, via Hollywood. And when that starts to become less likely as an avenue for, for you know, production houses and films and other things, well, what, what, what happens is that the, you know, the money people, the investors pull their money out which means that some of these companies that were break even or losing money because they were you know, banking on, on these deals flipping, uh, they're now going to have to lay off staff. They're going to have to withdraw and, and pull back their money. And that's absolutely going to happen. You know, Valiant's been very quiet lately. They're going through their version of this. Um, you know, I, I mentioned Boom. There's been a lot of rumblings about Boom. There's uh, several companies out there that are going to struggle. IDW perennially always is struggling. Now they've got some, they have some more recent money, so that may, you know, stave off some of this, but I, you know, this is the future for a number of companies. So my advice to you, you know, I'm looking on what people are saying on Twitter and they're, they're focusing on in many cases, maintain your rights and everything else. And you should, but you should also make sure the platform you're standing on is solid. And I think if there's one, you know, a consistent thing about comics is that a lot of comic creators, a lot of uh, staffers, a lot of editors, they don't worry about the platform they're on. They tend to ignore that kind of stuff. They tend to, you know, dismiss it. They tend to believe in the stability of the industry that's always been around. So they would say things like, well, you know, I, uh, you know, boom has been around for a long time. So is IDW. Because it's been around for a long time, it will continue to be around for a long time. Well, not not necessarily. And in the case of a sale, and this is what Oni is going through right now, basically Oni as a as a property, as a brand, as a company, it's going to be around. It's it's not going anywhere. But what is going to happen is it's going to basically shed costs and shed people. And this uh, this comment, which I'm sure is true is that we're headed to a skeleton staff, people who are just basically pushing things around. And, and another thing I guess I'd watch out for is there is a lot of rumbling. Now, this, this won't hit the creators, but this is definitely going to hit the staff. There is a lot of rumbling right now, which basically goes like this. Why do we need to pay so many people to be full-time in our company? You know, why do we need so many editors? Why do we need so many marketers? Why do we need so many of, of these different roles? You know, maybe we, maybe we, you know, why have four editors and we can have two? You know, there, there's a lot of question marks going on right now about how long or what does it take to actually produce and, you know, ship a comic book? And are we overstaffed? And shouldn't, uh, I, I, I heard this comment, which is a, which is a false one. I heard this comment of like, hey, uh, you know, with new technology out there, Shouldn't we get some efficiencies in, in making and producing comic books? It feels like we should be able to, uh, you know, work with half the people. You know, now it's easier to just email things around, people working in digital. Uh, but, you know, it, 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 we've got, you know, various video conferencing systems and everything else. You know, maybe there's some modernization that needs to take place in our business, and maybe we can do with less. So in a world where, you know, again, all these factors kind of collect into one spot, and you have you know comic companies or maybe overspending, comic companies that weren't modernized, comic companies that, that their business model was to sell off properties, you know, for Hollywood kind of reproduction. Um, if all of those things are are tightening, and the investment community is also going to be looking a lot more carefully at where it puts its money due to inflation and other skyrocketing costs, then that means overall there's less money to to do what needs to be done in comics. 
And so I think it's I, I think it's we're in a reasonably dangerous time. So at any at any rate, um, you know the comments coming out. Uh, uh, Jay Ferber uh, said, "You know, so sorry for all the folks that got let go from Oni Press today. What a disaster! I've got a graphic novel slated with them in October. Will it still come out?" That's definitely a concern. I I totally agree, but. I, I, you know, I think there's the, the, the bigger issue here is how many more publishers is this going to happen? And is this an isolated event or are we about to see a bunch of dominoes go down? If, if you want to, you know, I'm putting my money on the dominoes plan. Look at some of the things that have occurred over the last six months, including what's happened to Comixology and digital, including some of uh, how Marvel has consolidated what they're doing and some of the merging that they've done with their Disney line of business including how DC has operated over the last nine months. I, I, I Look, we're in for a scary time. I, the comic industry is absolutely going to resemble the dark days in the 90s where, you know, there was big question marks if some of these companies were going to survive. And I, now is the rubber meets the road moment where we're going to find out if comic companies, uh, you know, can, you know, can, are, are they running at a loss? And they've been filling up the gap with angel investment or, you know, potentially business models that are not sustainable. This is where the variant cover scheme might just get tested pretty heavily. Um, and, and by the way, you know, the one thing that that isn't going to save these companies, because I've heard this a lot, too. Uh, Eric July did uh, the Ripaverse and, you know, got a huge, I think, what, first day over a million dollars, just made a ton of money on this thing. And what I've heard uh, now a lot are traditional comic publishers going, well, if things get bad, we can always crowdfund some stuff and raise the same money. And my answer to that is, I don't think you can. I don't think it's going to work that way. Now, nobody take what I'm about to say out of context. I know you're going to feel like that. But the Ripperverse and a lot of the, you know, the, the people who are buying into that comic those are not all neutral parties who are just sitting there going, I would like to buy a comic. I wonder which one I should buy. Oh, this one looks good. I will put my money there. The people who are funding this are, are people who know Eric July, who are on board for that experience. And, I mean, he's curating an audience. There's nothing wrong with that. But keep in mind, if you're a small comic publisher, if you're a Aftershock, you do not have the same following as an Eric July. And that really may really burn people up. But if the Eric July, you know, money in what's going on with that comic is coming as a result of kind of the, the work that's gone on to social media and videos and kind of all this other stuff that he's been doing, he's he's in a very different business than Aftershock or Avatar Press. That's a very, very different thing. So if you're Aftershock, you can't just say, well, if things get bad, I'll just replicate what happened over there in the Ripperverse, and I'm, I'm guaranteed to get a million dollars. No, you're not, because that's not the business you created. So he, he's, he's in a very different business. I, I don't think that's terribly debatable, but you know, I mentioned to someone earlier, and they're like, why are, you why are you saying that Eric isn't making comics? Like, fuck Christ. I, no, he's making comics. Of course he's making comics. But his path to get there was way different than Boom or IDW. Now, you can argue much better. That's fine. But it's different. So if you're Boom, you can't just duplicate what was done not and expect the same result. You absolutely can't. So I, I don't think crowdfunding... It, it, is, it is strange. I, again, over the last three weeks or so, I've heard a ton from traditional comic publishers going, well, you know, if those uh, amateurs over there can do it, crowdfunding, then we could easily do it. And the answer is, uh, at some point, there was a split in business. There was a divergence in how the things were done. And, and that business, the crowdfunding business, went in a different direction from the traditional publishing business. And so, yeah, you could recalibrate your business to do that, but you do need to understand it is it is a true recalibration, it is a true shift. You are uh, you're 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 gonna you're you're gonna have to radically change parts of your business. 
It isn't just uh, in that. Good Lord. Again, no mufflers in Texas. Um, it is if in a world where you flip and suddenly say, well, we're hardened comic publishers. We know the comic business and the people doing the crowdfunding are amateurs. So therefore we should be able to do very good crowdfunding. You got to understand it's, it's act, no, the whole world is reversed on you. The people who have been able to successfully do campaigns are now the experts and you're the novice. That's not, that's not a, a, a well, I mean, it, you can take it however you want. It's just the truth. So anyway, uh, what's going on with Oni Press, I mean, it's a mess, but the company is absolutely prepping for sale. And to me, the, the maybe literal million dollar question is, who's next? Because if you think it's stopping at just Oni, you're out of your mind. Thanks for listening.